Software development co coaching uh, technical practices on uh, companies. Companies who want to improve their development practices, who want to learn how to uh, be better at solving problems, uh, experimentation. That's what I do. And uh, that's the gist of it. So I have two personalities. One of me is uh, Oki, of me, which is uh, I have a job, full time job. And the other part of me is I'm a, like a Michael, uh, I'm a uh, volunteer in a community. Uh, what community? Agile community. And this Agile com community has been running for about uh, six years, since 2010. Uh, it started much earlier, but anyway, we started the regular meetup since 2010. And for the past six years, we hold three conferences. Uh, last year was the, uh, one, of the, one of the most notable conferences. We had 2013 conference, 14, and then 2016 conference. The purpose of the conference is to you know, I know many people have been reading about agile development on books, but what if you can hear from the people who, who actually started it? So from, with that in mind, we bring uh, people who are originators of agile development to Singapore to close up the knowledge gap, and um, we are very lucky that uh, we are able to get money following last, last year. And there are many stories to how, how we get, it's not easy to get, but there are many stories to, to share uh, that would be another topic. So, um, from I, I, I work in Audi for about six years already, six seven years. Uh, before that, I'm uh, mostly a Java .NET developer, and I'm surprised to meet uh, some of my ex colleagues, well, my ex uh, companies uh, colleagues over here. And um, what else? So, yeah, the mostly full-time developer and then I decided to join a company that do coaching, public training and on the people side. Well, I'm, I'm very interested in that aspect because the more I more involved in finding out how to develop software better, I try to introduce to people and then I get why. That doesn't work. No, no, we have our own ways of uh, working here. But that doesn't work with us. So, as a kind of a problem solver, I'm very curious to find out why. Why people are, seems to be resisting. And, and the more I find out, the more interesting it becomes. It goes into system dynamics, into system organization. And then I, I have opportunity to join up in where I get to learn a lot from mentors, to learn even deeper into organization. And, and, then, and here I am doing this. Uh, what I'm busy now, I'm helping a company creating a training, technical training program so that they can, their developers uh, can level up their technical skills. Code smells and refactoring is uh, one small part of it and it's also a very core part of it. So, um, the, 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 I've been in software development for 10 years now and one of the challenges in software development that, that interests me a lot and deeply is, is the challenge of uh, software maintainability. What is that? After you develop software from, from a new green, greenfield project, you go very fast. Very fast, you, yes, you can do a lot. But as you do more and more, and you find that it goes slower. 
have more and more defects coming up. Defects slowing down. You spend more time with defects, you have less time on writing code. So uh, I've been to many companies and I've seen again and again um, developers spend more time reading code, trying to understand, than writing code. If you are the customer, would you like to pay them reading code? Probably not. Mm -hmm. yeah, probably not. So uh, to get a quick poll, how many, how many of you spend like, more than 50% of the time trying to understand the code before you can make a change? Yes, imagine you can reduce that to, to you can lower that. Like, I don't think you can prevent that from happening, but uh, since 1990s, Kent Beck, Martin Fowler, they have been introducing techniques and skills that can help to tackle, tackle that problem. And I am very interested in that problem because uh, in 2004, 2004, I, I bought a book, Michael Feathers. He wrote Working Effectively with Legacy Code. That book, compared to, at that time, it's Java 2. Probably Java 2 or 1.5, I forgot. Uh, book, uh, Spring uh, Framework Book, version 2.0 at that time, probably. Um, after 10 years, that book by Michael Feathers, Working Effectively with Legacy Code, is still very useful. The book on, on technologies, is get, it gets outdated. So I'm very interested in such practices, technical skills. I try to, um, so I try to find such technical courses in the past in, when I was still a developer, uh, full-time developer. I try to find such a course that can, I can learn a lot from, but I couldn't find any. But I'm, very fortunately, I, can, I meet uh, a lot of good people, and then I learn from them to tackle this problem. And um, you know, I, I, I coach companies, I, I join teams, I see, I experience how developers work. You know, often they have something to change, they step, make a one step, and then make a change, and then suddenly they step on the mind. So it's, they, they're unaware of it. When they step on the mind, they, they took two steps back. And then they want to make a few more steps forward, and then another mind came, and took some more steps back. It's hard to get to the destination when we are, so we, I felt the atmosphere in that the team is like they are working on a minefield. It's hard to move forward. And of course, from a business perspective, uh, it is hard to understand as well. Uh, usually they don't, they don't see that, that uh, it, it, it is harder for them to, to, to go deep into, into that part, what, uh, how serious that could be. And so, so this is a big problem. Um, the, I, I'm going to introduce just very briefly looking at system dynamics. And there's something, a figure I'm, diagram I'm going to uh, share is called causal loop diagram. It's often used in system thinking to see how things go. So this is a very quick introduction. You have two variables. One is your bank balance, and the other one is your earned interest. So these arrows are links. Links are, uh, how do you read this? With a bank balance, the more bank, bank balance you have, you increase interest, increase interest, you have more bank balance. This is a reinforcing. If, if, you, if, you, if you map it to a graph, uh, the two variables go up. Can you imagine that? Yeah. This is a reinforcing loop. And um, <coughs> the circle. So in another scenario in a company where feature velocity means that the speed of you know, developing features, if you go faster, if you go faster, you create more defects. That's the for certain companies. So this comes is a simplified model of one of the companies that I uh, that I've known. And when they are pressured to go fast, they create more defects. Create more defects, spend more time on defects, that will reduce the time, uh, will reduce the velocity. So uh, this is called a balancing loop. If you draw out on a graph, uh, it goes something like, 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 probably like this, one goes up, the other goes down. Okay? Uh, this is just an introduction. I'm, I'm going to show very quickly the kind of the kind of uh, the nature of software development we are in, and then what can we do to get out of that kind of uh, vicious cycle? 
So a variable amount of back code you have uh, will increase the number of bugs. Agree? Okay. More back code increase the number of bugs. The more bugs increase, you spend more time trying to fix the bugs. And then you panic. When you panic, what happened? You increase hacks. You open up your secret developer secret toolbox. And then you do all the all the quick hacks. And quick hacks introduce more that code. So you know, this is a reinforcing loop. It will increase. And uh, not only that, it could also affect the motivation of developers. It could reduce the motivation of developers. Reduce motivation of developers, increase the amount of that code. So you can spend all day to expand this even wider you know, to why developers are leave companies sometimes. Because they are not motivated by, by, the, by the, the bad code that they are facing. And they don't know how to deal with it. So, oh sorry. So, motivation of developers will, um, well, the, less, the less motivation they have uh, will increase the amount of bad code. So, what can we do? Um, I'm going to talk, introduce this term called code smells. Amount of code smells indicates that code. It's a way to it's a way to 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 sense, it's a signal that how bad is the code or how smelly is the code. If we uh, if we have that sense, that sensory, it can help us to uh, open up the opportunity for refactoring. Okay. Refactoring means that we uh, improve the design of the code without affecting the behavior so that it is easy to change. With refactoring, we can, re we can reduce the amount of that code. So if a circle means uh, there's an opposite direction, uh, we reduce the amount of that code. So this is the nature of software development. James Granning, uh, two years ago, came to Singapore and, and gave a talk at, now it's pivotal, it used to be new. He, he, he gave a talk about why he's, he's about 60 years old. He said, why is he still a developer? And in one of the topics, he, he said that, you know, uh, in software development, you change something, a customer asks you to change something, you change it, and then uh, you bring it to them, and then they'll say, thank you, and they'll ask you for more change. That, that's common. And he says that, you know, if, if you can't deal with change, if you can't improve on how to change easily, then you're probably in the wrong business. So in software development, this is the nature. And the, the, the question, the big part of how to solve is, you know, how, how do we make it easy to change? So this builds up the, I hope this builds up the motivation of why, of uh, why we want to increase our software maintainability. Uh, what is code smell? Code smell is, uh, as what it says in from Martin Fowler. In fact, this term is coined by Kent Beck back in 1990s. And the story goes that he, at that time he just had a had the first a child. And then his grandma said that, you know, if your if if your if, uh, if your child smells, it it may not necessarily be a problem. It may indicate that's a problem. So and then he was trying to, he and Martin Fowler is trying to, you know, um, has been talking about refactoring um, for quite some time. And then they realized that, hey, how did they get to know those refactoring ways? And how to improve the code? They realized when they track back, they realized there's something that triggers them to do those refactoring. Something is the signal, is the indicators, and he coined it as code spell. So, yeah, uh, so it's a surface indication, it, it, it does not mean it is bad code, but it may indicate a deeper problem. Uh, there's a list of code smells, uh, there's a list of even more code smells, which you will, you probably may use this later. And then, um, what is refactoring? It is improving the design of the existing code without actually 
changing the external behavior. There are many refactoring methods, like those that you see here. Um, and oh, uh, if you haven't know the book, uh, Martin Follows, I think it's 2001, I'm sure. He, gave, he came out with a refactoring book. It's all written in Java. Uh, it is actually applicable for many languages. And in the cover of it, he actually indicates uh, the, if you meet certain code smells, what kind of refactoring can you do? So it's actually quite systematic. It is systematic. And what is it? When do you refactor? When there is a smell. That's the most important part, which, uh, which many people um, doesn't, doesn't know. It. So, then. I'm going to keep track of time. Uh, if, I, if I don't stop at 8.45, please tell me. Because sometimes when I start in the quota, uh, I may get possessed. <laughs> yeah, so... Um, no. We are going to... No. Everyone comes from a different company. I, I don't have... I wish that I can come up with a quote where it is related to your work. And then, no, we can actually do that together. This is what I do when I'm in companies. I specifically smell their code and then take out examples and do it. But um, we don't have that luxury. So I, I kind of like inspired and created an exercise myself with lots of smells here. Um, for this, for meetups, you have to take a dating app. A dating app. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Let's see if they open source that, they can get a code. Everybody can relate to that. Okay. No, no. To do. No, no, no. Please stop it. So, uh, this quote here. No. Uh, let, me, let me go through the quote here. Uh, anyone seen this quote before? Has seen an email in a message that Michael sent through? Okay. That's a, that's a feedback. Never mind. That's a. That is why I try to fit the code within a screen so that you can understand. Um, it is very simple. Okay, I have this diagram here. You have an orders writer, a class that accepts a, a domain object called order. This order itself has many products. Okay. What it's essentially trying to do is that this order writer is trying to convert this order in, in the list of products into a JSON. JSON string. Okay. What you see here, uh, if that's at the back, you can't see, please uh, move yourself forward. Uh, you have the JSON object and you have the properties of the JSON. You are really taking out the uh, domain object, orders data and property, <coughs> product data, and then put it into this. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm curious. I, I can't stop uh, being curious on that. Anyone? have been through such code before in your work? This is much better than the code. It already has a string buffer, not string computation. That's a good thing. Yeah. Uh, try not to optimize. <laughs> anyway, so, no, this is uh, very, very common uh, what I see when I go to companies as well. So, we are going to our task until 845 is to remove as many smells as possible. How do we remove it? By refactoring. When we refactor, we remove some smells. We keep doing this again and again. So this is where it requires some of your... Uh, I will be your operator, kind of like Siri, and then I'll ask you uh, what smells there are, you tell me, and then I will, I will do the action. Okay. So uh, this class, although there is a get contents, it goes uh, beyond that. No, at, the, at the the bottom is quite straightforward. It just uh, try to close up the take away the comma, uh, trying to close up the curly braces. It also has some methods like uh, get size for and get color for. Um, these methods are currently only used in the get contents for JSON methods. So this class has three methods. We are going to focus on the get contents because, because it has what smell? 
London is the long method. Good. So, you know, every time that you uh, identify some smelter, I will unlock that smelter. So you, you need to use long method. Okay. What other smells can you use in this code? Primitive obsession. Primitive obsession, where? I think where you go. Size. Um, size. Which line? Oh, okay, on the bottom. The bottom. How can you see? Line 30. Okay, uh, well, let, let's focus on this uh, contest first. Let's put uh, on this, this screen first. So from line 11 to line 42, what smells can you Comment. see? Comment. Comments. Comments. Where? <laughs> hey, good try. Good try. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, this uh, this function seems not what? neat, but okay. uh, dealing with just the water, but also for dark. I'm going to go through very specific here because code smells are very, very specific and it's quite close to being objective. So let me go through comments. You know, comments is a smell when if there is a comment, okay, let me, let me create a comment smell. Uh, okay, uh, this is a create a, create a, create a, an op, uh, order JSON this comment is the comment smell. Why? Because it tells you what the function does, not why it was there. Great yes. okay. So, comments that describe how, what the code is doing uh, is a smell. Because you, know, you, you, can, you can refactor that box to express the intention of the code uh, mm -hmm. better. We will get that. Uh, in that case, what that, no, that doesn't mean comments are bad. What are good comments? Give me some examples. It's the decisions you make why you want to use a certain construct and a uh, description what it's supposed to, uh, what it's supposed to outcome is. Exactly. Uh, Should get me the day. <laughs> I can't remember. So, Excellent. So comments that describes you know, how this class is working with the other classes or you know, why sometimes you're using this API that it requires a number three. You know, the API doesn't have any documentation and then you probably want to put some comments that say that. So, uh, so you know, to remove comments, smell, uh, remove. <laughs> <laughs> of course, you will stop that. You should do more refactoring. Okay, other than comments, what other smells can you? The magic number, things not mentioned there. So yes. <laughs> magic. Uh, what, where's line, the magic line number? Line number 47, I would say. Line number, wow. <laughs> <coughs> line number 47. And line number 55 as well. Why the subtraction of 2? Mm -hmm. Okay, so 2 oh. is, you know, doesn't really tell us yeah. the attention. Yeah, that's the magic number. Great. Uh, so, other than that, so I'm going to kind of like run through a, a few smells first before I start doing the refactoring. What other smells? There's another one very clear. Duplicate the code where? Same way. Same way. Same number 47 is different. Can you tell me the correct or the words or the characters? SP dot a pen. SP dot a pen. Yes, exactly. <laughs> so you have this, you can highlight that and it tells you all this duplicate. Great. What is another smell very prominent? Some some things uh, that you should use it right for what you said on the string static literals. You could use yeah. I make products code and then you call it. Yeah, then you use it. What what which 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 is that over here? Yeah, tree. Yeah, tree, two G's one. Okay, and we're going to take the follow the product. Use it's very specific. Code smells are very specific. <coughs> so someone said primitive obsession. Where is primitive obsession? 
Oh, currency is a strength. It's just, it's just, it's currency can be one. What is another one? Very, very. It's like, it's like size, showing size from the law. Sorry? Size of the law. Size. No, that, that's another one which is very prominent. Long method. Long method. Yes, there's another smell. What about primitive obsession? Where is the primitive obsession? The biggest one. It is right in front of you. <laughs> this class is orders writer. In orders writer, there is a method called get contents, and this get contents tells how to what is the data structure is it used to accumulate the string. String builder. String builder is a primitive obsession. It's a low level primitive data or structure uh, that is used at a higher level abstraction no, method. So this is a, a, a smell, one of the most prominent smell. We will spend some time trying to remove that. Uh, where's the clock? Okay. <laughs> I need to make sure, make sure I, I, I don't get carried away. So and, and also do. Okay, we'll we'll spend uh, uh, some time to to remove some of the key, the the very very interesting smell. So uh, let's let's tackle duplicated duplicated codes and primitive obsession in well hand in hand. So what I mean by that? So. Um, let's try to tackle yeah, duplicated code and let, let's try to tackle duplicated code. Let's re reduce the amount of duplicated code for now. So from right here, okay, I can I can see that there are certain patterns in this code. Do you see that? I try to make some space with there are certain patterns. What 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 does this represent in JSON? Mm -hmm. New field key and the key. A property. A property. So the uh, code doesn't say that. Here's a JSON property. It says as be a pen, blah blah blah. And you pick over it. So I'm going to try to uh, reduce the duplication and 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 also yeah to focus on uh, reduce duplication. One of the ways I, I would do is uh, because this this thing, this is the value and this is kind of like the key. It's embedded inside the SP pen. Uh, what if I try to take that apart? Take that apart so that as we append uh, the way how it tries to append uh, between this section and this section are exactly the same. When it's exactly the same, then we have removed some of the duplicate code. How do I do that? Uh, I'm going to introduce uh, a new some data structure. Uh, I'm going to introduce a map. And so, very simple, uh, not trying to think too far. What is the smallest thing I can do that I can remove the duplicated code? So, what I can think of is uh, perhaps data and then call it a hash map. Data, I want to do a put, a key, a key call code, and then a value, a value called product.get code. Okay? So, I have one property. And now, Oh, before that, please run your test <laughs> before you do it every factory. Uh, test pass at the corner there. Uh, it's a bit small. Well, okay. I can bring this up. So, uh, b before we have, a, just to prove to you, we have a series of tests. Uh, coverage is high, and you can kind of like uh, assure that functionality doesn't break. Or if it breaks, it tells us. Now we introduce this, we kind of like duplicate even more code here because we duplicated the key here. So I'm going to attempt to kind of like create the, the logic for, for, for this. Um, I'm going to do a, a look to look through the dictionary or the, the, the map. Spend too much time on C sharp. So <laughs> a map and But then we draw a while about map for each. Is that a simpler way? Map for each. Yeah. Map for each. Yeah. Really? Just just write for each. For. So the data is also each. Data. 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 Data.
Some code. Um, maybe I use um, <coughs> like this, and then we have a because it is a string, so we need another code. Okay, I'm trying to be very, very careful here. Yeah, we need this comma and space. A comma and space, yes, that's right. Let me put it below. Oh, oh, okay. So, uh, comma and space. Wow, this looks a lot better. Cool, let's run the test. Okay, good. The test pass, this becomes a date code. Let's uh, remove that. Right? So, uh, then follow on next. We, no, we haven't really removed duplicated code. We just did one of the uh, instance. Uh, let's try to put a color. Put color. Right, and then command this out, run the test, still pass, excellent. Uh, let's try size. Would size be the same? Okay, I'm going to duplicate this. Use a command shift uh, up to move the lines. And then data dot put, we have a size, comma, get size for product. Right, command this out, run the test, still pass, remove the code, now we get price. Price is a bit special, why? It's, a, it's actually a double, it's a double. So double doesn't have any, any double code. How can we do this uh, in small steps without breaking the code for too long? No, I can, I can, I can actually do this. Data dot put, and then uh, what is it? Price, product, get price, and of course you will complain. Maybe I do it to, to string dot. No, it doesn't do to string. Uh, let, let me. We just just hack a bit <laughs> because uh, we are not going to really use that. So it, it will not work. So. The code currently, the code currently in this for loop does not allow uh, double. Does not, it's not specific to double yet. <coughs> what can we do? If I let me comment this out. So this should be the one. Okay, run the test. We are still green. So one of the ways is that. Uh, um, before, before you do this, make your code a little bit more general. A little bit more general. How do you do that? We can do a, a, simpler, a simpler one. We can do this an instance of, uh, if it's a double, then I will append. How come? That is a string. 
in the middle. Ah, okay. So, uh, in order not to change too much, so I should actually change this to object first. Okay. When I change this to object, wow, this is excellent. Much better than before. Okay. So value dot uh, is instance of double. Then I do. Uh, so if it's double, I would not use the double code. Run the test, still pass, uncomment, run the test, fail. Why? You didn't comment. Oh, okay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Well, this is the reason why uh, more, more than one pair of eyes is good. <laughs> Alright, so uh, the last bit, currency. Data dot puts currency, comma, pro product dot get currency. Okay. I have one question. Uh, when you change uh, so first the price um, in JSON was represented as numbers, so no, no double quotes. So you moved it into the map, and then you ran the test, and the test were not failing. But then you change, <coughs> make an if else, and remove the double quotes. So it means that you introduced a change that knew that what you did in the first place was wrong, but the test was still passing. And here in the refactoring, what I will do is also maybe write a new test. Yeah. Or, or, or I can do it the other, the other way around, which is to, to deliberately fill the test first, mm -hmm. and then uh, write this new statement to pass it. Mm -hmm. So, good catch. Mm -hmm. Now we fail. Why? How come? Because the comma, right? Because of the comma. So before it is this, no, going back to the green, uh, this is tricky. So let me try to split it, uh, split away this so that, so that uh, it is, let's see, it's tricky. One space and then no. okay. So now I undo, it will still fail. It will still fail. Why? Because uh, it still appends the comma. Right. Okay. So uh, one way, no, there are many ways of doing it. What I what I I'll do uh, one of the ways is to kind of like introduce a bit more Magic. <laughs> okay. Uh, if there are better ways, uh, you, could, you can you can you can do that. It's no problem. So take a look at the code now. We have remove a bunch of we have remove a bunch of ones. A bunch of uh, SB append. And we, we have the logic over here. We split these concerns, we separate the concerns of data away from uh, the building of JSON, the logic of JSON. So we split them apart. We're not really splitting them apart yet because this one, that, that braces is still out there. So uh, I'd like to localize it, shift command down. So that everything about JSON is over here. Oh, this is this is a technique of uh, well, we call it sorting. Just bring close to the to where it is being used. Uh, I like to pause here for a while and see what we have done. Uh, what smells we have unlocked? What other smells we have unlocked? Other than that, you get the word. What else? 
bring it to the location. Now the problem about that is we are trying to deal with it. Yes, it's still there. And the number is also still there. Code. Take code. Numbers. Take code. Numbers. Cool. What else? Any more? Where is the date code? It's gone. It's gone. <laughs> it, it was dead. It's dead. Hey, okay, what, what refactoring have we tried? You introduce a different data structure. Replace something with map. Okay, we are going to continue. So uh, we split away the two, two of the concerns, and now this concern seems to be pretty generic to build to build a JSON object. So and, and this part, especially especially this part seems to be something about properties. Something about, about properties. What if we do a, a small step by okay data for each we're trying to do this for properties uh, with uh, IntelliJ, you can use the control T and then method, abstract method. What if we call it uh, JSON property? Okay, and uh, you know, I don't really like to pass in string buffer and then let it accumulate and pass by reference uh, like this. I like it to be immutable. So how can I do that? Um, Right, let me let me run the test first. Okay, sb dot append. I append the JSON properties. I remove away the uh, the parameter. This will make JSON properties uh, unhappy. So I'm going to make it even more unhappy, and I'm going inside. Now compiler tells me where to change. Okay. So um, from here it became clear. I'm going to do a kind of a small step first. Uh, string buffer, string buffer, so that you know, this is the quickest way to, to make the, the compiler happy. And then I return sb dot to string. Okay, this will make uh, that unhappy, and then I, I pass in change the return parameter. So this way, run the test. Produce uh, JSON properties, and of course, I'm pretty sure some of you would have known a better algorithm to represent this code. What is that? Huh? Use Jackson. Oh, okay. Thanks for thanks for reminding me. Uh, Jackson. Jackson. Yes. For this exercise, assume that uh, you can't use any third party libraries. <laughs> Otherwise, no more fun. <laughs> Otherwise, no more fun. I know you can you can use that. Yeah. Uh, thanks, thanks, uh, thanks for reminding me that. So, okay. Other than J Jackson, what else? I, I think it still stinks because, like I they the writer needs to know exactly how, how, what properties are there. Mm -hmm. So I, I rather would delegate the, let's like say, uh, give me a list of your properties to the uh, to the respective object, and just give me give me a map back if you want to use the map, mm -hmm. and then let it write out. Because let's like say, I add a description object, uh, a description property to my uh, product, and my code goes or doesn't uh, uh, return a proper result anymore. So I then need to wait, have two places in my application, one in the writer, one in the data object, that I need to update. So the data object should know what it needs to hand over to the, uh, to the writer. Okay. How do we get that in small steps? That, that is what refactoring is about. Making small steps. So um, I, I just, as you, as you were saying, I lambda. No. So I know I know another way, uh, kind of like to, to make this a bit more simpler uh, for, for now. 
So um, if you have some other better ways, uh, you, you could you could try it uh, on your other side. So using using map to what is this map? Yeah. Oh, Yep. And then we don't get value. So get P we don't get value. Okay, I do a, a map. Hey, this good. This good. This good. Okay, do a map, and then I can do a collect. Joining to thank you. So let's see if this uh, if this uh, works. Okay, test pass. Okay, um, this code still smells white JSON properties, uh, as you as you mentioned. It doesn't really make sense to be inside order writer, orders writer. Mm -hmm. That one you could leave as long as the map you pass it comes from the object. Uh, so the so it's say so you have. The, the part where you say data put, data put, that piece from line 30 to 36 should be a call to the, uh, the product uh, object. Product get JSON map. So data equals to JSON map. Yeah, let's, let's, let's try, kind of like try, try that and see how, how that goes. So you know, this is trying to produce a yes, data. As in get properties. So let's uh, extract method, uh, command option M. Um, let's call it uh, product JSON model. Okay. So uh, why why do I call it this uh, specifically? Is uh, JSON model is because uh, it is not it is it is something related to, to JSON. I want to name it so that it can help me to sense uh, to smell later where where it where it wants to go. If you keep going straight to the product, it should, get, should be product get proper get properties. Because the map itself, it has nothing to do with JSON yet. And that's okay because the object, the product object doesn't need to know you want to do XML, you want to do JSON, you want to do edit facts, so you would go product dot get properties. Uh, and then uh, it returns you a map string object. And then you then in your writer, you decide that you so, want to do JSON or XML or right. what have you. So are you ever saying to, to move this to product? Yeah. Yes. Okay. So uh, here, um, you can do that. Or I, I, I'll probably not go there for, for now. Uh, okay. It is possible. Depends on whether what is your domain object. How, how, you want, how much you want your domain object to know about JSON. Well, you're saying you'd make it... Uh, Get get properties like get uh, get business properties or something. Map string object is doesn't know anything about JSON. Can can we rename the function name to products property map? Not the, it's not necessarily JSON. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's true. Uh, let's try that. So rename rename. Let's uh, let's move it first and then let's rename. And see how, how that goes. Students letter will file is private. Continue. Hmm. Not that. There is the get color and size. Property. Along the products. So what happens is that get size and color for um, is still used in orders product. Um, we we try to move them to the. Product as well. They are at the end of the day they are product properties. So but then later once we move it we can then have a second function that creates XML, not this pesky JSON stuff. Okay. Um, thanks for the suggestion. I, I suggest uh, I, I 
let me try try a, a, another alternate path and let's see how, how that goes. And we can have a discussion with you. So, <laughs> so let, let's see if we can. Yeah, one minute to 845. Yes. Time's up. Time's up. Just do a quick and Okay, let, let's see. So, let's see what we can do with the last uh, two minutes. So this is what? This represents a JSON object. Is that right? Let's, uh, let's extract that. Okay. And, and again, I don't want it to... I don't want it to 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 use the, the string builder from there. Do the same. Return string dot format. Okay. Then return make it return the JSON object. Let's run the test. Test fail. What happened? You missed the comma. Comma? comma? Oh, the comma. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it looks like uh, one comma came out. So I'm, I'm not going to. Okay, I'm going to pass the test first. And then I'm going to start a pen. The comma. Take away that comma. Right. So now we have. Uh, let me move this up. On, on one of the method is to is to uh, write out a JSON object with the curly braces and the other is uh, JSON properties. Um, I might do a decision like something like this. Let's do a refactoring of putting it extracting to a separate class and. Um, and a, and a simpler, simpler way I can think of is probably to, to make it static, as a static method first. Because it doesn't have any, any instance variable. And then use a delegate. This is extract class refactoring. Maybe we call it JSON. Then remove it over there. When we move it over there, now the name says JSON, JSON object. Kind of like repeating itself, I'm going to re rename that, take away the JSON, maybe call object. Or uh, if I want to sugarcoat it, I can call objectify. So, 846. <laughs> okay, well, next time I'll try to improve uh, further. So, no, I, I'm, I'm fully aware that uh, we are not going to complete the uh, remove all the smells. But uh, let's take a review back into what refactorings we have done. What have we, what refactorings we have used? Uh, extract the object. Extract the method. What else? Same responsibility for the JSON. Is it possible responsibility? Great. What else? What are the refactorings? Sorry? Yes, we need. We need this refactoring. What else? Extra class. Extra class. What else?
was very short to one. story that uh, back in the days of I think 1990s where um, people were arguing about what is good design. So they were showing quotes and saying, well, my design is better than yours. Yours is better than my, you know, whatever. So they couldn't get to an agreement at all. And then um, later on they, they realized that, hey, although we can't agree on what is good design, but we can pretty easily uh, say, what is that quote? Smelly quote. And someone said that, no, no, if, what if we remove smells from the quote? If we remove the quote smells, would that, that quote be actually better? Would it be actually a good quote? Probably yes. So, you know, since then, um, that's, that is kind of like my, my philosophy in, in trying to create maintainable software. And also trying to make it uh, more objective in identifying smells and refactoring. And um, I hope you like this session. And you have just um, kind of like uh, participating in removing smells to get better code. Thank you.